Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take. I'm sorry it's been a while, uh, but I've been, you know, busy and preparing for this podcast. I'm going to go over the NFL draft grades in my humble opinion. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to go over each team. Uh, let's we'll start off with the AFC East. I'm going to start off with um, Buffalo, and I'm going to have them get an A-. minus. So while most of the names they drafted don't scream excellent draft, you know, the Bills did their job and drafted the areas they needed to, like wide receiver and safety and so forth. So I kick not them for that at all. Uh, next is Miami. I'm going to have them get a B plus. Miami needed pass rushing and some online help, and they got that in the first four rounds. The reason why they don't get a, a higher grade is because they already have two really good running backs in Mostert and Ochenay, who they dra- who they drafted last year. And I know the running back from Tennessee um, is pretty fast and all, which McDaniel, you know, Coach McDaniels loves speed. But that just seemed like a wasteful pick there where they could have used that um, for somewhere, for another position. And then also, for their later round picks, they drafted two wide receivers. And unless there are injuries to Tyreek Hill or Jay Waddle, those are going to be wasteful pick, picks because they won't see the field in year one. And if you're Miami, you're supposed to be a win-now team. So... I just didn't care for those picks at all. And then New England, I'm going to have them get a B. It's amazing how the Patriots draft can look when an actual actual organization is making the call instead of Bill Belichick. Um, They needed weapons, and they got some with um, Washington receiver Polk and Javon Baker from UCF. uh, I really like those picks there. They also drafted to help the O-line, which was needed. All their picks but one were offensive players. Now, the reason why they don't get a perfect grade is because um, even though I like Drake May compared to other quarterbacks in this class, um, it, it was very tempting for Patriots to trade down and accumulate picks and then so you could build your roster and then just draft the top quarterback next year. Um, but I understand, you know, why they didn't do that because if they like they like May. But the problem is being with a defensive coach in a rebuild – um, even if he doesn't start right away, even if that's Jacoby Brissett, I just feel like that's not the best situation for him to be in compared to like an offensive coach or something like that. So time will tell them. New York Jets, I'm giving them an A. The Jets have good drafts in recent years, and they, and they did so once again. The Jets needed O-line help for Rodgers, and in a deep O-line draft, they got that. Then they drafted a wide receiver in the third round, which they needed. Then they drafted a great running back to back up Brees Hall. Then they also get their new QB of the future. Um... Now, the only reason why they didn't get the perfect A-plus grade was because they drafted another running back in the later rounds, which didn't make sense at all, because you could have used that pick for elsewhere, but oh well. Um, okay, now for the AFC North, you got Baltimore. I'm giving them an A. The Ravens are known for drafting well, and that was the case once again. Now, the only reason why they didn't get the perfect A-plus grade is because while they did draft and tackle in the second round, um, uh, since they lost both tackles in the offseason, I thought they should have drafted another tackle in a deep tackle class um, instead of just one there. So that's the only reason why I didn't get it perfect it plus. Cincinnati, I give them a C. The Bengals could have had a better draft. They draft, they did draft a tackle in the first round, which they needed. The problem was they took a defensive developmental tackle, and while Burrow is in his prime, you need ready-made tackles. I also thought they could have drafted a star wide receiver um, with Higgins, you know, potentially on the move. If not this year, then definitely next year. Um, and... There was receivers like, you know, Thomas Jr. even, you know, going to the second round early with McConkey or something like that. Um, then with star pass rusher Eric Henderson requesting trade recently and Cincinnati not wanting to give him a big extension, I thought they should have gotten a pass rusher and not two defensive and tier linemen, especially since they shot in Sheldon Rankin this past offseason. Uh, now, because I like at least four or five of the picks, you know, I like, the, like their um, receiver in the third round. I like some of their picks, you know. That's why they get at least a passing grade, but definitely could have been better. Next, you got Cleveland. I'm giving them a B. Now, it's hard to get a perfect grade when your first pick is not until near the end of the second round. Um, however, with the limited picks they had, they did a decent job. Besides QB health, the Browns' defense, specifically on the road, was their main issue. Um, and they used four of their first six picks on defense. Now, none of these picks are household names, which is why they don't get a higher grade, but at least they fill position area needs. Um, Pittsburgh, I'm giving them the perfect A+. The Steelers have had good drafts in the past, but I thought they exceeded expectations this year. The biggest area of improvement was the O-line. 
and they spent their first two picks on the interior of their own line, which I really liked both picks, and then they spent two later round picks to add depth to the own line. And then with them trading Deontay Johnson, they needed a wide receiver, and they got the Michigan wide receiver, Roman Wilson, um, who I, I like that pick. So nice, nice draft for Steeler Nation. Okay, now AFC South, you get Houston, giving them a B. Same thing, same thing as goes for Cleveland. It's hard to win the draft when you don't have a first round pick. Um, I like that uh, quarterback that they could have gotten late in the first round fell to them second round, so that was a good get for them. I also like them drafting the Ohio State tight end, them Stover, in the fourth round to add with Schultz there. Um, otherwise, didn't, the other picks didn't move the needle for me, so that's why they didn't get a higher grade. Indianapolis, I'm also giving them a B. Um, the fact that they drafted the first defense player and drafted the 15th pick was interesting. Um, Latu is a good uh, get, assuming his medical history doesn't come back to bite them. Um, I also like that late in the second round, they got the Texas wide receiver Mitchell, who was not supposed to be there. I picked number 52, so that was a great get for them. Uh, now, rumor has it they really wanted to get a tight end brought like Mark Bowers, but couldn't trade up for him. And since they didn't draft a tight end at all, that was kind of not good in my opinion. So, And I also didn't care for their picks as well. And Jacksonville give them a B plus. I like that the Jags traded down to get a wide receiver at an appropriate spot there. Um, Brian Thomas Jr. I felt like I was, I felt like in the twenties was perfect to get him, not in the late teens. Um, I also like that four of the next five picks were defense players since defense was an issue for them. Um, then I also like that they spent some picks on the O line, even though they spent money in free agency on the O line, since the all, since the O line was not that good last year. If Lawrence does not get hurt, the Jags are a playoff team, so it's good to get him as help much as possible. Um, next, you got Tennessee. I'm giving them B minus, uh, which is actually being a little nice there. Um, they didn't draft um, the right tackle in the first round. Um, they drafted CJ Latham instead. I thought they should have got the Penn State tackle or the Oregon State tackle or something like that. Especially since the tackle they drafted is not projected to be a left tackle at all, which they could kind of need, just a right tackle. But um, that was kind of an interesting choice there. And then they didn't draft a receiver till later on, uh, which I didn't like. Now, it helps that they like made free agent moves instead of Tyler Boyd, you know, but still like to have a wide receiver in the future. I feel like they could have drafted one um, like in the second round or something. They didn't. Uh, they uh, they went until like later on, and the one receiver they did draft that they didn't care for. Um, now, what I did like about their draft is I the defensive players they drafted in the second and fourth round. Um, that's something that they needed to do because they needed to upgrade their front seven. Okay, now for the AFC West, Denver, I'm giving the B plus. We all have the other top six quarterbacks gone, and Peyton, you know, just loves Bo Nix. I understand why they drafted him at 12, because um, there's no guarantee that they're, that you could trade down, like, to 18 or 19 and try to get him. Um, but the problem is 12th was just too high to get him. Um, but the but the Broncos better hope that he's not a bust, though. Otherwise, that's going to look like a very bad move there that's going to set them back for a while. Now, I do like their next two picks. They got a solid pass rusher in the second round. I mean, third round and the fourth round, they drafted a familiar wide receiver that, uh, uh, Franklin, that's worked with Bo Nix in college. Um, so that's a good chemistry thing there. I don't care for the later round picks, though, which is why they, they didn't get a higher grade. Um, Kansas City, I'm giving them the perfect A+. Plus. I knew they would draft, you know, Worthy in the first round, the wide receiver, speedster wide receiver from Texas, and they got him. Now, some people think he may be potential just a track guy and a bust, you know, but I think um, Reed will know how to use him best. I trust him that. Also, they got a tackle in, late in the second round that I like, and with Donovan Smith may not be in back at all. And the other tackle they drafted the year before, potentially not being ready. I like that pick there for them. And also, like that in the third round, they got a tight end, the TC tight end Wiley, because he could sit behind Kelsey for a few years and help it take over once Kelsey retires. Um, I also like their other picks as well for the most part. I prefer they would have drafted QB earlier if I had to pick something to, to knock, but at least they got one, so good draft. Uh, Las Vegas give them a D minus, um, one of the worst grades out of everyone. I understand Brock Bowers can't be good, but they already have a good tight end that's pro caliber, so the draft Bowers made no sense whatsoever. Then they focused on the old line first ahead of the secondary, and that should have been flipped. They did draft a running back, but I doubt it's one that could replace Josh Jacobs or even challenge, uh, you know, Abdullah or uh, Madison who came over from Minnesota. So they, so that was a, you know, question mark there. And then they obviously needed a quarterback, but since they were all gone by the 13th pick, I understand why they didn't draft one, um, which is why I won't give them a complete F. But on the bright side, at least they can get a potential top quarterback in next year's draft. LA Chargers, I'm giving them an A. Chargers got the best left tackle in the draft. Uh, rated left tackle in the draft. I also like the receiver that they drafted in the second round, Lama Cocky there. I also like that they're then in the third and sixth round, they focused on defense, which they desperately needed to focus on. This Chargers were one of the worst defense in the league last year. 
Um, my, my only reason why they didn't get the perfect grades is because they're way too long, in my opinion, to draft a running back. Since Harbaugh loves to run the ball, one would think he would have drafted, like, in the third or fourth round, his, his running back for Michigan, Blake Horm. Um, but nevertheless, he didn't. They waited until the, like, later rounds to draft a Troy running back. Who's, I'm not sure it'll work out on that. We'll see. <laughs> now for the NFC East, Dallas, I'm giving them a C. The Cowboys draft felt like they were not in win-now mode. They did not draft a running back, which means they had to rely on Zeke and others. Not saying that they had to spend a second round pick on a running back, but they could at least draft one and they did it. Then they waited until late in the draft to draft a receiver. And it's not one that I would have drafted. I don't think it's going to be best. And then I think, then I thought they would consider at least taking QB to think about post deck since I don't think Cooper Rush or Trey Lance is the answer. Um, Pratt, who fell all the way to seventh round. I'm surprised they didn't take a fly on him. Um, now the reason why they get a passing grade is because I like that they trade down to the first round to get the tackle they want to get the tackle they like in Tyler Guyton. While he's a developmental guy, I do feel like by year two or three he should be ready. He'll be good. He'll be a good guy. I also like the other online picks um, since the online needed proving. I like I liked all that. And I also like some of the defense picks. Uh, New York Giants and give them a C minus. I understand why they didn't take a QB. Penix should be good, but they didn't want another QB with an injury history like they do with Jones. And then McCarthy's overrated in my opinion. And uh, six is way too high to draft Bo Nick. So I, under I understand it all. So I heard they tried to trade up to third pick to get Drake made, but that is what it is. I like that the first you know, round pick is getting Lake Neighbors. They needed an elite weapon. They got one there. Other than that, I do not care for the draft. Either they drafted someone too high or the name still screaming good draft. Um, the Neighbors pick is the only reason why they even get a passing grade since they desperately need a, a good weapon. Philly, I'm giving them an A. Once again, everything just falls into alignment for the Eagles. It took a while for corners to get taken, um, and Quinn and Mitchell from Toledo just fell right into their laps with the 22nd pick. And then they traded up in the second round to get Cooper John from Iowa, who's surprisingly still there. Um, since their secondary was that bad, it's no problem to draft two corners, especially since Dijon also has good punt returning skills. Um, I also like the weapons that they got. I like the Clemson running back to back up Saquon, the A&M wide receiver, um, to provide more depth there. Now, the only reason why they don't get the perfect A+, is because I felt like um, they should have drafted um, a center like higher um, to replace um, Jason Kelsey, because replacing him won't be easy, so that's my only knock there. Um, Washington, I'm giving them an A minus. I was fine with them picking Daniels over May. Daniels, small and skinny is my only concern with him, but otherwise I like him. Um, I also like that they got the best defense tackle available in the second round with Newton, who could have been a first rounder. So that was a good get there. And I like that the Mission Queen quarterback they drafted in the next round. And then I think he'll be a steal. A lot of people think he'll be a steal. I also like the tight end that they got from Kansas, Ben Sinat. I like him. Now, the reason why they don't get a, the perfect A plus is because I don't care for most of their day three later round picks. Next, to get the NFC North, they got Chicago, giving them the perfect A+. Plus. They got the best quarterback in the draft. They got to draft a Dunze with their other first-round pick. So now they have, you know, Mike, now they have, a, you know, um, DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, and now with Dunze, so that's an elite trio there. Um, then they drafted a tackle in the third round, which was their next area need there, like that. Then they traded up to get the best punter in the draft, and having an elite punter can help you win games, and I like that pick a lot. Now, they didn't have any later-round picks, but they didn't need to here. Next, you got Detroit. I'm also giving them the perfect A+. Detroit has had some good drafts recently, which is why they are a Super Bowl contender. And once again, they had another good draft. They traded up to get one of the top two corners in the draft, which was, um, which was you know, um, a good get for them. They got drafted the, um, they drafted the, the what was it, the Alabama quarterback, um, Terran Arnold. Um, and then um, I liked that. Um, late in the second round, they also got another cornerback. I think it was the Missouri cornerback, if I'm not mistaken, um, who could have been potentially an early second round, late first rounders. That was a good gift for them. Um, then um, they basically copied the Philadelphia Eagles there. Um, and then also had to get in Utah safety, Sion Vaki, because he could play safety or running back, depending on what where the injuries are, where the depths needed there. I like that get. And then they also drafted an intrigue online prospect early on day three. That's a low risk, high reward situation. So the home team, you know, who has to draft had a lot of cheer about there. Okay, Green Bay, I'm giving them a B. Green Bay usually drafts well, and even when they make questionable decisions, it usually works out for them, which is why it's hard to doubt them. However, there were some questionable choices here. In a deep tackle class, they got, they took one in the first round, although this tackle made up playing guard, we'll see. Um, they also got the best middle linebacker in the second round, can't complain there. I also like that in the seventh round, they drafted the Tulane quarterback, Michael Pratt, since, I'm kinda, since I thought that was a great get at the seventh round value, and, I didn't, and they needed a back and quarterback. 
Um, now, the reason why they don't get higher grades is because the rest of their picks just did not impress me whatsoever. Next, we got Minnesota. We'll give them a B plus. They did have to make a big trade for McCarthy, which is good. Um, they did make a trade to get a top three pass rush from Dallas Turner from Alabama, which I liked. They also got a good corner in the fourth round. Um, they also got the best kicker in the draft, the Alabama kicker, Rikers. Um, and they desperately needed a kicker, so they let great Joseph move on. Um, so I liked that pick a lot. Now, the reason why they didn't get higher grades is because I'm just not a believer in McCarthy. I know by that point it was just between him and Knicks, but I would have rather had Knicks over McCarthy. I, like I said, I'm just not a big believer in McCarthy. Now, because he's in the perfect situation with O'Connor and all that, he may end up being fine, but I, I just wasn't high on him. NFC South, Atlanta, they get a D plus. Now, before I talk about their first round pick, I want to talk about the other picks. They did draft a pass rusher in the third round, two defense tackles, which they need to do, uh, which is why they don't get a complete F. But the problem is, I don't care for those picks that they did draft in. And now, going back to the first round pick and drafting Penix Jr., I understand if things go well, they won't be drafting high uh, in the top 10, basically, in the next couple of years to then eventually get their future quarterback. Um, but the problem is, when you make the Cousins deal, you're saying you want to go all in and helping your pass rushers is one of the worst in the league is was the way to go on it. Now, if Cousins never gets fully right or gets hurt and Penix steps in and produces, then I'll, then I'll change their grade. Carolina, I'm giving them an A-. minus. I like that they got the Texas running back, Jonathan Brooks, and tight end, and Jatavion Sanders. Um, they also drafted a good wide receiver for South Carolina and helped give Bryce Young more weapons there. In fact, I thought they should have um, traded down um, to get a wider seat to get the wider seat that they did get because they easily could have gotten him later in the second round. So that was the only questionable move there is why is why they didn't get the perfect grade value through moves. Nevertheless, they got you know Young's weapons. Like I said, it's been a while, but the Panthers had a pretty good draft. New Orleans B plus. Uh, the clear need this time with for the Saints was a new left tackle, and the Saints got one in the first round with the Oregon State tackle. I thought it was going to be a top ten pick, so good for them that they got him. And then in the second round they trade up to get the other Bama quarterback. Um, Cooley McKinstry, which I liked. I also liked the Texas linebacker they got later, like in the fifth round. Now, the thing I didn't like was that they drafted this quarterback Spencer Rattler in the fourth round um, from South Carolina. And that was their, like, third overall pick. Um, now, the one thing I, like, the reason why I didn't like that is because they draft, they just drafted Jay Kaner last year. So, basically, what you're saying is, oh, yeah, we whiffed on that Jay Kaner pick last year. Either that or you just waste the pick. Now, and, and here's the other thing. If you're looking... I mean, since James Winston's gone and they don't have that back quarterback, it's like, again, believe it or not, Taysom Hill is actually a pretty good back and quarterback, in my opinion. But nevertheless, um, I think Spencer Rattler's best material, which is hard to say for like a fourth rounder, but I think he's the best material. I know I'm not high on him. Um, that was a waste to pick there. Also, they needed a wide receiver, and while they drafted one, it wasn't the one I would have drafted, uh, which is why they didn't get a perfect grade there. Tampa Bay, they get a B. I like the center from Duke that they got in the first round. I also like the Washington wide receiver, and the McMillan, and the um, Oregon um, running back. Um, I think it's Bucky Irvin's name uh, that they drafted. Now, what I didn't like is that they had a lot of defense players leaving the offseason, and they didn't draft a lot of defense players. Um, and the few that they did, I'm not sure are going to be big hits or not, so that's probably not there. Um, now, for the NFC West, Arizona had them getting A-. minus. Arizona didn't screw it up, and they took Marvin Harrison Jr. with the fourth pick, which I liked. I think he went off into rookie of the year. Then I liked that they got a defense lineman from Missouri, uh, Robinson, who, um, for the other first-round pick, and their defense line needed upgrading. Now, since they had a lot of picks, I mean, they had they made 10 more picks after the first round. It's like there were some picks I liked and some picks that didn't, but overall they get the job done. L.A. Rams, I'm giving them a B plus. I know they wanted Brock Bowers, but I like the pick that they got in the first show with Jared Burst, the defensive end from Florida State. The Rams liked pass rushing. That was the main reason, one of the main reasons why they lost the playoff game against the Lions. Um, so they fixed that. And then uh, they also addressed other positions like defense tackle, running back, which I liked them getting Blake Corn, the Michigan running back, to uh, be a nice one two punch there in LA. And I even like that they drafted a kicker because they desperately needed a kicker because that was the main issue for them last year. My only knock on the draft is they traded up to get defense tackle um, for Florida State, um, Fisk, whatever his name is. And they could have waited later on the draft instead of giving up draft capital to get him. Now, I know the Rams had extra picks to give up, but I, that was just, but especially since they also drafted defense tackle for Clemson, that was just kind of a little bit of a puzzling move there. San Francisco will give them a D. Since they revealed they are not going to trade Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuels to draft a wide receiver in the first round, and then later on in the draft, it was kind of shocking. 
Neither receiver is going to start or get a lot of playing time for a team trying to win now. Then while they did make picks for position needs like O-line and quarterback, I just didn't like the players that they got there specifically. The 49ers usually draft well, but this year, in my opinion, was not as good as normally for them. And then last but not least, Seattle. I'm giving them a B. They, get, they did get the best defense tackle in the class, I mean, the defense tackle for Texas, and they desperately needed a defense tackle to stop the run, so that was a good gift for them, and which is why they get a nice good grade there. Otherwise, a lot of other picks were questionable they don't really care for, so that's why they get a B. So again, thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel and turn about me. Thank you very much, and you all have a wonderful day.